the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoy uh, your weekend uh, your, and last week, and I hope you have a blessed week coming up. And uh, this Sunday, we just did uh, the 23rd of July. We sat there and, and went over uh, the true mark of a Christian. But the title started off, because I ended up with two titles. And I want to show the two titles, and I want to read the scripture that we use, because the fact is we as believers need to start operating as believers and stop operating according to the world and understand that we are all accountable to God. And if you don't think that, then, then, then that's, you understand that stop calling yourself a Christian if you don't want to be accountable to God. A lot of cases we seem to be accountable to man, but we got to be accountable to God. Amen? So, this is the, this is a topic that uh, I felt I needed to address this morning, uh, but <laughs> the whole point is we need to understand the true mark of a Christian. But my title, then I go with this title. But the second title I want to show you, the scripture I'm going to go over with, uh, is "Do Christians believe we benefit from slavery?" That's a question. Do you? Because in Florida, they they want to put and say there was some benefit from being a slave. There was some benefit from being raped. There was some benefit from being uh, tortured and mutilated and hung and forced to lay, uh, to, to work in in cotton fields and 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 cake and you know other agricultural uh, things as if these people came from civilizations that didn't have those things, don't have those skills. But if, you, if you're that ignorant, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you something. The earliest and first civilization started where? In Africa. <laughs> that's not an indoctrination, that's a truth. And the fact is that those people came from, those people who were kidnapped, came from uh, cultures and civilizations that were surviving and striving as a governments and as, as people, as communities. They, they didn't come out there sitting there hanging on a, a, just in a hut or just spear, throwing a spear. These people came. And don't forget, too, if you don't know history, the Moors ruled Europe for over seven, eight hundred years. Maybe you didn't know that, but you know it now. If you're going to listen. So we got to say, no, there's no benefit from being a slave. You think so? You be one and see if you like it. So I started with that. But this is what the whole point I really wanted to get to is this right here, the mark of a true Christian. And I want to cover those scriptures. And like I said, I hope you enjoy this uh, study we're going to do. I'll break them down in segments. But the fact is that we have to go by the teaching of Christ. We need to show and bear good fruit. Fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. We need to bear good fruit. And then we need to also show the mark of a true Christian. And that's what this one is about, is showing the true marks of a Christian. And don't forget, Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Obviously, if some people saying they love somebody else because they're not loving Christ, but they're not keeping his commandments. So here's the, the script I wanted to use that we're going to use by study. And those scriptures come at the end of the study. But look at what it says here. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving the hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide, on, provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore the enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, he shall heap coals of fire in his hand. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the whole point we're saying is the mark of a Christian. And I like to read that again. Be not overcome with evil, overcome evil with good. Listen, we need to be and bear the mark of a Christian. These are the answers to the test if you want to be a Christian. You make that confession and you bear good fruit because it's time for us to shine. And I'm saying is that's not some of the stuff we're seeing in the day. It's not about shining, it's about lying. And we need to not tolerate that anymore. It's time to start making the deal with the devil and start making the deal with God through the new covenant, through Christ. Amen? And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you when I see you. And now we're getting ready to go to the next session or the concerning the study we did this week on the 23rd of July. God bless you and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. His natural habitat. We right. have we, we, we have state parks mm, mm. and we have laws to protect animals Come on now. in their natural on. habitat. Yes, sir. But yeah, that, uh, that, that don't apply to people of color who were in their natural habitat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. they're trying to say that there's animals that are more important than people of color. And, hey. and, and their lives and their habitat and how they live should be untouched and un, untethered. But wow. for some reason, they want to control not only our current, but our past. Yes. You know, our present, our future. Yeah. And, yeah. and dictate how they feel it should be. Mm. as what it is so when you look at all that there's there i always try to find the purpose behind behind all this you know and and it, it just blows my mind that a group of people are always put at the bottom and are always attacked and are always seem to be uh, lied on. Yeah. And for what? That, that's my thing. For what? What is the purpose of that? It, 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 it has no purpose. It has a purpose. Only purpose is well, to, the purpose to, if you, to create a social construct. Well, you look at the at the Bible and, and it pretty much explains, you know, a lot of these things. I'm not saying that everything yeah that happens to us but a lot of it is explained in the word yeah the, the word of god you know how 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 this world is 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 set up in a way to where it will attack mm. those who are of god yeah those okay. who are his children it's been that way since the beginning of time and when you look at it in a, a biblical fashion, then everything makes sense. Right. But, the but, revelation yeah. has to happen. Yeah, it, it does. It, it, yeah. It, 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 is, it is prophesied. Everything in the Bible that's been prophesied has come to fruition. Come on. And you know the thing they, they did to Christ too, didn't they? I mean, these are what the Pharisees did to Christ. Yeah. They, they tried to create a narrative Contrary to what his calling, what he purposed, who he was. Yeah. It was even looking for the Messiah, but if that person didn't fit their image of a Messiah, then they, they call that person a sinner. Uh, they call that person a gluttonous, mm -hmm. uh, right? A, a wine bibbler. Uh, they, 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 they try to impose those titles on him. And then they try to penalize anybody who listened to him. Yeah. Right? They, they kick him out. No, you got to go. You got to go. What do you mean I got to go? They couldn't even say his name. <laughs> they couldn't even use his name. 
that's how that's how that's the that's the tools of the enemy to yeah. use, and that's what the enemy did for people that were uh, enslaved in this country. Uh, and then the city, and then like I said, the audacity to say they benefited. Yeah. You you were better off today. You look look look. We're gonna, we're gonna forget what has happened to you for four hundred years. Yeah. And, and we're gonna sit there and see. Oh, look at you benefiting. You you're like you're, you're you able to 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 elevate yourself. Mm. From what we did to you, what you <laughs> are now. You know, say it again, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we threw everything with the kitchen sink at you. <laughs> you're, able to, you're able to rise above that? Well, you know, by the grace of God. <laughs> not because of you. Not because of what you do. You, and they're still trying. <laughs> still trying. They're, they're still trying to cycle back to that. Exactly. And, and so... <laughs> And the purpose is what, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, then they, and then you always hear about these great things that they're gonna do now. <laughs> and you know, who's gonna do it? Yeah, who's yeah. Gonna, who's gonna perform these great feats and stuff, you know? Mm. And so. Uh, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a deception. That's the whole yeah. point, right? Yeah. It's, 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 that's what we're talking about, wolves and sheep clothing. People, that's what we're talking about. That's what I'm saying. And sitting there saying, don't, don't, don't deceive yourself. I mean, Galatians, once again, I quote it again: "Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For what some of man soweth, that should also reap." I know people want to sit there and 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 seek this glory that that they believe is their inheritance, but what's the cost? What's the cost? And here's one of some other scriptures here. Look, check this out. I'm gonna bring it up, and and we're gonna use these because you you're using the tool of the devil and, and trying to 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 make what you're doing. I gotta wait for the thing to come up, stacking up for a second. Uh, but we let you know, I was going to Proverbs uh, six sixteen. You know, and I hear it's coming down. Uh, Help you read that because <laughs> oh, okay. You've been looking um, back like said it's what happened. You okay? My, my, yeah, my son was coming in the door. Okay. <laughs> you were looking at that. Uh, These six things the the, the Lord hates. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a blind tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Mm. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Mm -hmm. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Yeah. That that is, if if that's not <laughs> uh, accurate. Yes, sir. And, and unabellished uh, information about the government here in the United States. It's, I mean, I don't know what else is. And, and I'm going to tell you, because we can say that that's also uh, some of the do church dogma that occurred justifying the slavery and, and then endorsing it throughout years and history. You know what I mean? Do you you mean that you you did some abomination things that are, that are, that's just contrary to the things of God? You the people rape these people. You know our ancestors. They 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 mutilated them. They did all these categories to them, and yet they thought they were doing the things of God. Or to sit there and say that these people don't deserve. I mean, Pope, we talked about a couple of years ago, Pope Nicholas, right, the fifth. <laughs> He's the one to sit there and say, these people are not covered under the grace of God. You can do anything you want to them. You can take their stuff and you can put them in perpetual slavery. That's what the Pope, Nicholas the fifth said. 
And so that, in other words, he was one of the parts of his leadership of the, of the ministry that told people, you can commit adultery. You, can, matter of fact, he basically you can do all these six things, seven, eight, all these abominable things to people because they're not covered under the grace of God. You know, and you all of a sudden say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me make sure I understand your doctrine. You're telling us that we don't have to do the teaching of Christ towards these people because we're going to label them what we want to label them. We're going to tell them that they don't have the grace of God over them. So we can do anything. We can do, we can operate contrary to what the label of Christianity is supposed to be to them. Does that make sense? No. Not, no, it don't not, make sense. It don't make, it doesn't make common sense. It doesn't make but it common makes sense. sense. It makes it, sense. To somebody. They, they are, the, the object, is, the object is mm -hmm. to control a people. Yeah. So, if you can change their belief, rewrite their belief. Tell you rewrite your own belief too, and right? And rewrite their history. Mm -hmm. Then you can predict their future based on their lack of knowledge. Oh you yeah, know, you would right. You create you create condition. My people perish with the lack, of, lack knowledge. of knowledge. Right. And so if you have no knowledge of who you are and where you came from how could you understand the destination that you were heading to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so to to change who you were and to rewrite who you are and then to predict where you're going because that's <laughs> all you hear because that's what you that created we are we are evil <laughs> we are aggressive, you know, we are criminals, we are rapists, but the people who are saying that should be talking to a mirror. Exactly. That's the whole point I'm saying is, where did it give you to be, operate on the, operate contrary to the will of God? Yes. You so, suppose if you're going to be an ambassador... You, you should be falling in line with the ambassadorship mm -hmm. of being saying, look, this is how we operate. This is our position in life. See, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't abuse you. We don't exploit you. We don't lie to you. We don't hate you. We don't kill you. We don't shed innocent blood, meaning children. You know, and the thing about Florida, one of the things about Florida too, is they don't forget the fact that you should take the babies. Yeah. And, and, and go and, and, and use them as bait to go hunt crocodiles. The, my point is that how I got what you're trying to sit there and you're trying to do is, is to create a narrative for a group of people to say that they're savages and everything else and, and say we have to treat a savage this kind of way. I'm trying to understand the reverse part about you taking off your commandment by God to love one another. I, I'm trying to figure out where did it tell you to share, go preach the good news and start teaching and being evil. You know, you know how I said deliver us from evil, right? Why, where did it come in that you are supposed to be the evil? Because the, you know it's funny about this. I think they don't talk as much about those sex, those sex plantations that were scattered throughout the South under, under the guise of slavery. Sex plantations. Where did it get where a slave owner, who's supposed to be thou shalt not commit adultery, where did the license? How does somebody teach you the license to commit adultery? You could, if you sit there and say these people are less than or whatever, where does that give you the license to, to be in the gutter and to do things contrary to the will of God? That's the thing I'm trying to say. Does that make sense where I'm coming from? Where, 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 does, it, where does it give you 
you're supposed to be light if you're a Christian. Because I think that's the whole point we really come to the conclusion. You, you, they weren't Christians. How can you say you're a Christian and yet your fruit says contrary? That's that's what I want to make sure people understand, and, and because that's what confused a lot of people. And they said, they said, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, whatever it was in Gandhi said, I love the concept of Christianity until I met one, <laughs> because that's the problem. You 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 can't label yourself, deceive yourself, and be contrary to what you what God called you to be. I put that here too. I'm a, and then I'm gonna can I'm gonna come off off the slides, but. I put it in here about the fact is, just check this out, because this is similar to the, the atrocities that they did to people in slavery uh, by using the tools they call the church tools, really the Old Testament tools, to do things to people, right? It says in Galatians 3, 1, old foolish Galatians. And you could, you could pull Galatians out and just old foolish Christians. Yeah old foolish believers, right? Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? See my point? We just talked about it. Who bewitched you to commit adultery? Who commit you to do the six things that God hate, yea, seven abomination? Who, who, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus, Yeshua, Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Look at this other one. This is one I, I, I want to throw in here. Christ has redeemed us, the la these last two. Christ has redeemed us, right, from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. As it is written, curses everyone that hangs on the tree. Now, I was thinking about, let me, I'm going to read this other one too, then I'm going to come off the slides so we can talk. You got to remember this so you can look at your, your, your you refer, if you put it back on the other screen, you can look at it. It is in Galatians 3. He said, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Curse is everyone that continues not in all things are written in the book of the law to do that. See, the, the, not only would they try to create the narrative that you're a bad person, then they try to apply the law against you. Yeah. Right? It, it only went benefits them. <laughs> it only went, right. In other words, I, I'm going to violate the law. I'm going to violate the law. I'm going to come off this so you want to look at it with Galatians 3. Uh, I'm going to violate the law so that I can curse you. See, look, look, I guess I wanted to say this, people, with the lynching, right? You know, it said curses everyone that hangs on the tree, right? So, but but what they don't understand is, if you're the one to put them on the tree, the person is not cursed, it's you. Yeah. You you the one, cause you put them on the tree. Yeah. Who who told you to put the person on the tree and say, see see? You, you see what I'm saying? I guarantee you a lot of that lynching was based on some people using that, even that scripture. Yeah. See, he's he's on the tree. He's cursed. He's cursed. You put him on the tree. Yeah yeah, but you know. I put it on the tree because it cursed. Oh, it's all like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. So he, the person is cursed. So therefore, they are on the tree because you put them on the tree. Yeah. So if they weren't on the tree, would they still be cursed? Uh, yeah, you know, because I, I, I was just doing, I was doing, you was doing who? What, what, what were you, how do you think you were doing God's work? Because I think that's a problem some people do in the day. You know, even people, look, I, I get it as far as being anti-abortion. But I don't get it where it's not anti-life. You, you, can't, you can't take just a piece of life, of the cycle of life, and ignore the rest of the piece. Hey everybody, God bless you. I, I, once again, I still be excited about getting to the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and discussing the Word of God with other people. And this Sunday is no different than for the rest of this week. Uh, we'll send out in small segments uh, these uh, sessions so you can digest them. Uh, but I'm telling you, 
the the topic today, I ended up with two topics uh, because you got to be led by the Holy Spirit on what He wants to talk about, and 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 try to make sure to understand who we are, who you are, if you believe that you are a believer in Christ, if you are let Christ be Lord, because it's not just confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, but believing in your heart that God raised from the dead now as we say. But the key to that is that you believe with your heart and you 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 confess salvation to your mouth. But the key what I want to put in there is that you let him be Lord in your life. If you follow in Christ, Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. So the question is, is some of the behavior that we do, are we doing that to to please the Father or are we doing things to please man? Do we believe we're going to only be accountable to man in this lifetime or do we understand we're going to be accountable to God? That's what I want to be able to talk about. And when, when, when I came up with the study, I had the initial topic is the mark of a true Christian. And, and I felt led and also inspired because of the news of this week where the state of Florida so then says that, you know, uh, slave benefit from being slaves. And you know, good and well that, that that's just a slap in the face to anybody to just think that you you benefit from being a slave. Uh, could I ask you a question? Who anybody anybody who was not were not slaves, anybody who would, came to this country as free people or indentured people, but the fact is you came to this country and did you want to be a slave? Do you think that you would have been you it would have been beneficial for you to be a slave, opposed to being free? And the answer is going to always be being free. So it isn't the time that I get in. I'm close, this is my opening piece. I want to give and and, and close out. I had two topics. The first one was do Christians, and you know, because I'm a Christian, so I'm talking about as Christians. Do Christians believe we benefited from slavery? And the answer should be no. And if you do believe that, then you need to go and come up on the line and tell people why you felt that you should have been a slave so you can be benefit. So instead of sitting there trying to say that somebody else benefited from rape, benefited from murder and lynching and the brutality and forced to, to not pursue happiness, but to be forced to work for somebody else forever, or at least until they die. You know, that's that's the conditions of slavery. And and something about Florida, they forgot the fact is that those people that actually uh, are anti-abortion don't go to forget that some of the people in Florida or, or in some of the other states, I guess, as well, use baby slaves to capture alligators, meaning they put the baby out in there. And, and to reach with an alligator and come eat, eat a child. That's 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 demonic, don't you agree? But the bottom line I put down here is that do Christians believe we benefit from slavery? No. We don't think we benefited from the brutalities of slavery. And if you think so, why aren't you going to be a slave for yourself? You know, the bottom line is we are believers. And Christ had then said in John 15, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You know his commandments, right? John 14, 30, what, 13, uh, 35, or 34, where it says is a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. And then 35 says, and men will know you're my disciples for the love you have for one another. So uh, obviously, uh, people in slavery that became Christians, they still had the same type of mentalities and everything else really bring up this modern day time. And yet they did it by to, from people who profess to be Christians. Uh, now, the benefit is something from God, not from man. And if, if I go by the man benefit, I don't want it. Not that way, anyway. The other one I put down here is the mark of a true Christian. And, and, and as we close out, the fact is, man, um, are some people not recognizing, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of them, they don't really are accountable. They don't believe they are, but everybody will. The Bible said, 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Um, everywhere will be go before God and give account of himself to God. You know, that's why we want to advocate Christ. So you take it for what you want. But obviously in this world, talking about in this world, some people feel that they are not going to be held accountable. And maybe that's why they do what they do. They can't see what they're seeing or doing. I mean, so God bless you. Hope you enjoy yourself. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to put my introduction in. I may do a uh, close out as well, but don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, and uh, I appreciate the support of listening. Man, God bless you, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.